New from Ochang, the KG UV8 Hotel. A new model in the lineup of dual band HTs from Ochang. I did a couple of videos about the UV9 series recently that were well received. Got a lot of good comments on it. These are some solid radios coming out of China. We're going to take a look at this new model today. <laughs> And sit down. Welcome to the channel. My name is Jason. I'm KC5HWB. If this is your first time to join us here on this channel, we do reviews, news, and how-tos of things that are new in amateur radio. And this specific model is very new. It's just came out maybe two or three months ago, something like that. I got one from buy2wayradios.com. They are a show sponsor. He sends me some stuff for review that I have to then give away or or do some sort of donation sometimes he'll send me free radios sometimes he'll let me borrow radios etc cetera, etc cetera. this one was sent to me for free by him he asked me to do a, re a review video on it and i told him i would be happy to so just up front with that but i've said on several videos that i really like the ochang model of radio their uv8 series and their uv9 series the basic general rule of the difference between the UV8 models and the UV9 models. The UV8, both models are dual band. The UV9 models, in addition to the 2 meter and 440 band, they usually add six or seven or eight different bands of receive that you can receive only on like six meters and 220 uh, aircraft band on, on two or three of them, something like that. So the eight models are typically just the two meter and 440 band transmit and receive. And then the UV nine models are typically add a bunch of receive bands to it. So there's that difference there. So let's go ahead and take a look at this model today, moving over here to the overhead cam. This is of course, UV eight hotel. I do notice that it says UV eight hotel tango right here, UV eight hotel tango. I don't know if there's a difference or not between the hotel and the hotel tango not really sure about that you can see it's got a part 15b certification right there so that is an fcc certified something at least so let's take a look at this those of you who may be wondering why it's not part 97 certified there is no such thing as part 97 certification so more to come on that in a different video this is the whole box here zoom out a touch Customer warranty card. This is the radio itself. Right there. This is a battery. Obviously, ooh, that's a thick battery too. That is a 3200 milliamp hour battery. So good. Uh, well, it's got a QR code on it right there. You can scan if you want to. That's good. Okay, so the battery. This charger here, I opened this up a minute ago before I hit record. This port right here looks different. So I don't know how that's going to, it looks smaller than the standard uh, O-Chang port on my other model. So I'm going to, this is right, this is the wall wart for it. Yeah, see this guy right here, that's a different, that's a different plug than what's on other standard O-Chang models. So I really like the UV9D Mate. HT I've been carrying because its desktop charger like this comes with a USB cable out of the back. Well, I mean, it has the, the standard circular plug here, and then it has a, a USB-A plug on the back, so it's easy to carry around with you. Also, it looks like there's only three connectors on that one, and I think most of the O-Changs have four. We'll look at that a little bit closer in a minute. Nothing under the box. Okay, let's get rid of that. So put, okay, so here's the back of the radio. Let me zoom back down. You can see right there it says uh, UV8 Hotel Tango. Again, I don't know if there's a difference between a hotel and a hotel tango, but that's what it is. Uh, two meters and 440. Transmit from 144 to 148. Transmit from 420 to 450. Receive 137 to 174 and 400 to 480. So that's what you want to see. For those of you who are sticklers about uh, making sure the Chinese are doing what they're supposed to be doing, the belt clip connections are on the radio itself which i really like i'm always a fan of that let's put this together here that the antenna is sma female on the antenna itself there's the focus and it is sma male on the body itself so fyi on that this is a long antenna high gain antenna it says right there so I've always been a fan of the O-Chang antennas as well. Typically, they 
perform better than your your bell fang antennas are a lot of times junk but the o-chang antennas i've had good luck with i do like the fact this is the first o-chang i've seen where it has a black background and a white screen or a white uh <laughs> white letters rather black background and white text so i, I really do like that There we go. Okay. Now we can go VM channel. Okay. So you see right there, let's get a closer shot of that. Actually, let, let me go around the radio first. Okay. So PTT, two programmable buttons right there. What I assume are programmable. That turns on the flashlight. Wouldn't be complete HT without a flashlight. That goes to FM stereo. The top button goes to FM stereo. The bottom button turns on the flashlight. That's pretty pretty common. Battery in the back. Got your speaker mic over here. And it is uh, underneath this screw, so it makes it somewhat waterproof. Channel selector on the top. Volume knob on the top. LED indicators. Flashlight. There's your antenna. On the bottom, there's nothing really on that. So let's scroll down. Let's zoom down here and get a shot of the screen. If you're finding value and getting good information out of this video, consider hitting that thumbs up for me. It does tell the YouTube algorithm that this video is worth watching, and it'll put it in front of other ham radio operators who are wondering about this specific model. Let's get back to it. Here's your keypad layout, RPT, VM, AB, that's up in uh, top band, bottom band, and exit when you exit the menu. So go into the menu. Looks like it's got about 53 menus. 54. I don't know why it started at 53. That's weird. Okay. It's got 57 menus. Excellent. You got your ocheng.com at the top there. Battery indicator. Screen goes off too quickly. That's something you can adjust in the menu settings, though. You can switch between A and B. Switch between... This is your channel mode, channel 01. In typical Ocheng fashion, what they do is they, they give you three options for memory channels and one option for VFO. So those memory channel options are the channel name. So there's VFO. Then you've got that you can look at it by channel number. You can look at it by channel frequency. You can look at it by channel name. I don't have a name programmed in here, obviously. So if I want to know what the channel frequency is, I, I can name the repeater by its location of city and i can look at it by the frequency it's programmed into or by the name however i want to do so that's gives you several options there you you type in the vm button it and it scrolls between four different menus and the rpt button down at the bottom right of the screen right there that changes from that allows it to go to single band so if you're Having a conversation on one band and you don't want activity coming in from the other band, you can change. You can hit the RPT button and it mutes temporarily the secondary band. Right there, menu. Let's see. Let's go back to exit A B. Let's go up here to four four three eight seven five, which is a repeater near me. Go to menu, step. Okay, we'll go down to 2.5 kilohertz step. We'll not go to 833 for weather band, for uh, aircraft band, just FYI. And there is no voice prompt that I've heard as of yet. Three power settings. Roger beep. Hey, there you go. We got a Roger beep, guys. All good. Wide narrow. Voice. There's your voice. Okay, so it comes default off. There you go. Okay, so you can turn the voice on if you like such things. I don't like my voice on, so I usually turn mine off, but I always get that question, so there you go. You can turn the beep off. Go like that. I'm going to turn the beat back on because I think it kind of adds a little bit of transition to the video. So we're going to turn on the transmit CTCSS. 
there. Yeah, there's your PF. There's your function PF1 and PF2 or PF1 long and short, PF2 long and short. Actually, it doesn't let the PF2, PF1. That's your side buttons, so you can change some of those anyway. Okay, offset, direction, positive, exit, and now there's a repeater. Local repeater here in Grapevine that uh, always does a good job. KC5 HWV testing a new radio. Got a clean... Not HWV, KD5 UJL. Hey, there we go. You're coming through loud, Jason. Hey, Roger, good morning. Good to hear from you. I didn't know if anybody would be monitoring this machine or not. I'm testing one of these new uh, walks on radios that I got from buy 2 way radios uh, today. Yeah, what, uh, what model is that? Is it a DMR or is it just no. a plain old one? <laughs> plain old. It's, uh, it's a plain, uh, it's a dual band analog. It's the new uh, UV8 Hotel. Uh, it's got a little bit different look and feel to it. It's got a black background with white text instead of the standard um, white background and, and dark text. So it does, um, it's just kind of a, a newer, sleek design. Okay, well, it sounds good. It's got good audio, but uh, of course, go. getting in the repeater really well from, uh, from there. But uh, yeah, it sounds good. Yeah, I usually monitor this when I got in the car. I'm down returning some some um, Amazon purchases, you know, which mm. we all do a lot of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you on that. Good. Well, thanks, man. Yeah, I'm recording a video right now, so hope that I I hope you don't mind that you're on it. But uh, uh, I do want to share that uh, you say it has good audio i've got a little bacon frying in the background when you're coming back to me but i think that's because i'm sitting inside of the shack and on an ht so far from the repeater yeah it could be no i don't mind being on the radio i think maybe i've uh run your video i think i've done it one other time also mm -hmm. so uh okay take care jason i'm here at my place so talk to you later <laughs> Okay, Roger. Thanks once again. Uh, 73 and have a good one. KC5 HWB. And there you go. Huh. I didn't think he'd be monitoring that. Uh, usually talk to him on DMR. Got a little bit of static uh, in the background coming back, but I'm inside the shack on an HT, and that repeater is clear on the other side of Grapevine. It's on uh, the north side of DFW Airport. So I'm curious now to try one of the two-meter repeaters. This is the Hearst Amateur Radio Club repeater. They're the club that has done uh, most of, well, the first technician and first general class that I recorded and put on this channel. It's They are two cities over that direction, over a hill. So the fact that I'm able to key the repeater at all, there's a lot of Chinese radios I test that I'm not able to key the repeater at all. So the fact that I can is pretty good. KC5 HWB testing a new radio. So the fact that I can get into that repeater is pretty darn good. I've got to see if this radio will allow me to take a chirp file. If I turn the radio down like that, it doesn't hear it. Change the polarization. Turn it up like that. It, it came back to me. I didn't quite catch that. Uh, try it again, please. KC5 HWB. KI5MIS. KI5. Uh, you're a little scratchy. Um, any way to get any more power up? No. <clears throat> no, not right now. I'm just testing a new... Um, hold on. Right now, I'm just testing a new HT, so I'm not. Uh, I'm just kind of tinkering around with this right now. But thank you for coming back to me. I was uh, impressed that the HT even made it into the repeater from over here in Grapevine. All right. Uh, yeah, you're uh, you're dropping in and out. Yeah. Uh, very scratchy. So 
uh, not probably not your best uh, uh, transmission. Uh, Ki five MIS. No problem at all. No problem. Thank you for coming back to me. Uh, KI5 MRS from KC5 HWB. A couple of times when I transmitted, it I got descents in the top band. And one of my viewers came on one time and he's like, hey, I got this radio and I know you're about to do a video on it, but I want to know if you're getting descents. And I did. That's what that was. I had 443.875 on the top band. And when I was keying up two meters, I was getting some noise coming back from the second band. So I just hit the RPT key and it got rid of it. But I wonder if that's something that they could fix in firmware. Other than that, I've been, I'm pretty impressed. It's got a great sounding speaker. It's got good clean audio, as Roger said a, a minute ago, on the, on the close repeater to me. And of course, I'm inside the shack on an HT antenna. And the fact that it was able to hit that Hurst repeater at all says something there a lot. So pretty impressed with it. I'm going to see if I can load my chirp file from my previous Ochang models into this one i'm not sure if this is chirp supported or not i guess i could look that up it, i think it says on the front of buy2wayradios.com currently on their website it shows out of stock estimated ship date of mid-march so by the time this video posts they may be back in stock but it doesn't mention anything on the website about being chirp supported so maybe it is maybe it's not if it's not it's probably something chirp will add at a later point in time so 73 thank you for watching let me know if you have this model let me know what you think about it. If the descents thing, if, if you heard it just then, it chirped a couple of times as well. So it's picking up some RFI from somewhere. Um, I've got another HT on over there that's not picking up RFI at this point in time. So I don't know if the radio is just oversensitive. Uh, I'm going to have to do some real world testing on it. I might do some, uh, I might start carrying this one. I've been carrying that UV9, new, UV9D Mate as my everyday carry for analog for a couple of months now been very happy with that radio so i'd be interested to compare this one to that model but let me know what you think in the comments below thanks for watching and you guys have a good one